Errant accounting entries for outstanding expenses and prepaid expenses. So first let's understand the meaning of these two. Now you must be aware that every business prepares its account for one particular year. So let's say there is a person who prepares his accounts from 1-4-2011 until 31-3-2012. Right? There are some recurring expenses which every business has to incur. So let's say whether you talk about salary, right? Whether you talk about uh, maybe printing expenses, printing and stationery. The rule of accounting requires that whatever is the expense up to this date, that should be booked in this particular financial year. Right? But it may so happen that some of the expenses, let's say salary, if a company pays the salary on first of every month, so any salary which is there up to 31-3-2012 will actually be paid on 1-4-2012. Similarly, there could be some printing and stationary expenses for which the bills have come, right? But the payment has not been done. And second situation for the same expense can be that even bill has not come. Right? So when we talk about outstanding expenses, we talk about the expenses for which bills have also not come. If the bills have come, we would straight away debit the printing and stationery account and credit the supplier. Right? So this particular piece is actually not relevant for this discussion. Right? Now, if we have to provide or book an entry for these expenses for the reason that we have actually incurred a liability to pay them, right? These expenses are known as outstanding expenses. Or in other words, these are expenses which are remaining to be paid, right? Or to be provided, but they have not been booked in the accounts. So in that case, what we do is we debit the relevant expense account. So let's say if it is salary, we will debit the salary account. If it is printing and stationery, we will debit the relevant printing and stationery account by whatever amount. So let's say 500, 100, whatever that number is. And we credit the outstanding expenses account. Okay. So if it is salaries, you can write outstanding salary account or other account like that. Right. So an outstanding expense when provided is debited to the relevant expense head and credited to the outstanding expenses account. This is a liability and it is shown in the balance sheet. Right? Now talking about prepaid expense, again let's understand what does this mean. Let's say there are certain expenses, okay, let's say we are again talking about 1 for 2011 to 31 3 2012. On 31st of December 2011, let's say I pay insurance premium of rupees 12,000 for one year. Right? Now, when I reach 31st of March, how much time has elapsed? Three months have elapsed. So, nine months benefit is remaining. Right? When you follow the accrual basis of accounting, it requires that the expenses which pertain only up to this date have to be booked. Right? Now, originally when you would have paid the premium, what is the entry that you passed? You will debit the insurance premium account to cash 12,000. If I don't pass any entry, this premium of 12,000 will go and hit the profit and loss account, which is incorrect. Why? Because during this year, only three months of benefit out of this 12,000 has been availed. 
So what we do instead is we reduce this amount, we credit this amount to insurance premium account and we debit prepaid expenses. Now the name itself suggests what a prepaid expenses is. Prepaid means what? As on the date when you are preparing your balance sheet, this account has been prepaid, has been paid in advance. And how much is the amount? 9000. Why? This amount is apportioned based on the total benefit. So if three months have passed, ideally 3000 should be booked. If we debit this by 12000 and credit it by 9000, then effectively the net debit which is there in this account is 3000. 9000 is going to go and sit in the balance sheet. Next year, when the year ends, you are going to reverse this amount and book it to the insurance premium account. Right? So that's what a prepaid expense is.